Hello everyone. The topic for today's discussion is surface sterilization. It is an important step that a researcher should know before isolation of a microbe or pathogen from a healthy or diseased plant sample. This important laboratory step is also required equally by those who carry out tissue culturing of plant. Now, what is surface sterilization? We know that the term sterilization is killing of all sorts of microorganisms. Surface sterilization refers to killing all sorts of microorganisms from a surface of an object or tissue. In plant pathology, this process is required to be performed during isolation of fungi, bacteria, etc. from diseased or healthy tissue. Plant parts like root, shoot or leaf pieces are surface sterilized before placing on suitable media. Without surface sterilization, we cannot isolate a pathogen or a microbe like endophyte from plant sample. Now, one may have a question in mind that what is the difference between sterilization and disinfection. As we said earlier, sterilization refers to killing all sorts of microorganisms, whereas disinfection refers to reducing or eliminating harmful microorganisms, thereby preventing them from causing infection. Usually, Sterilization is done with high heat in combination with pressure or only high heat, radiation, filtration or chemical means. In case of disinfection, it is usually done with chemicals. Now, we have a handful of surface sterilizing agents and these are ethanol 70% concentration, sodium hypochlorite, calcium hypochlorite, hydrogen peroxide and mercuric chloride. Out of these, sodium hypochlorite is the most widely used agent. However, for some rigorous surface sterilization steps, a combination of these agents like ethanol and sodium hypochlorite are used. Well, now let us know about these agents in detail one by one. 70% ethanol is used as surface swab for the floor of laminar chamber. Plant tissues like seed, leaf beads, stem or root pieces can be dipped in 70% ethanol to get them surface sterilized. So when we do surface sterilization using 70% ethanol, it does not require washing with sterile water after treatment with 70% ethanol because 70% ethanol or in that case, ethanol has the ability to get evaporated. So, we don't need washing after the ethanol treatment. Though it is a very cheap and easy method of surface sterilization and readily available surface sterilizing agent, it is not always used because many Fungi cannot be killed using 70% ethanol.
70% ethanol affects cell wall and cell membrane by dissolving lipid and denaturing the proteins thereby killing the microbes. Here one may have a question in mind why it is 70% ethanol? Why not absolute ethanol or 100% ethanol? As it is 70% ethanol there is water in it and after this 70% ethanol is used for treating the plant tissues since there is water in it ethanol takes time to get evaporated out it remains for longer time with the treated tissues thereby showing its inhibitory or killing effect on the microbes if 100% ethanol is used in place of 70% ethanol then in that case since there is pure alcohol it will evaporate out sooner so it will not be available for longer time to be able to kill the microorganisms so it is 70% ethanol which has been found to be very effective compared to any other higher or lower concentration of ethanol now coming to the second surface sterilizing agent it is sodium hypochlorite it is most widely used and very effective sterilizing agent usual concentration of sodium hypochlorite is 1% of available chlorine the time duration for which a material plant tissue can be dipped in sodium hypochlorite solution varies from 1 to 5 minutes depending on the type of plant tissue softer tissues require less dipping time whereas harder tissues like seed wood require longer dipping time we have to keep in mind that dipping time is very crucial for successful surface sterilization if dipping time is more than what is recommended in that case sodium hypochlorite or any other surface sterilizing agent will penetrate the leaf tissue or any other plant tissue and will kill all the microorganisms present even inside the tissue so the plant tissue will not only be surface sterilized but will be sterilized thoroughly so in that case our purpose will not be solved so this sodium hypochlorite requires post treatment washing with sterile water since sodium hypochlorite is toxic presence of it in the treated tissue will affect subsequent steps in the isolation procedure compared to sodium hypochlorite calcium hypochlorite is milder it does not require post treatment washing now let us see the mechanism of action of hypochlorite this hypochlorite ion reacts with fatty acids and amino acids chloride combines with amino group of protein and forms chloramine that interferes with cell metabolism chloride acts as strong oxidant and inhibits enzyme function so there are multiple mechanisms acting here with respect to sodium hypochlorite so thereby killing the microorganisms easily coming to the next sterilizing agent hydrogen peroxide it is used at 30% strength for hard tissues like seed wood etc and 10% strength for delicate tissues compared to hypochlorite it is milder in action so dipping time can be more 
up to 10 minutes. This hydrogen peroxide must be kept in cool and dark place. Hydrogen peroxide has highly reactive oxygen atom that oxidizes the materials of microbial cells, killing them instantly. So hydrogen peroxide is also an effective sterilizing agent. Coming to the last but not the least, mercury chloride. The concentration of mercury chloride to be used is 0.1% that is 1 gram in a liter of water. It is very toxic to microbes so very effective surface sterilizing agent. Several post treatment washes are required to remove traces of it in the tissues and these post treatment washes are very important to get the successful surface sterilization done. Since this compound mercury chloride is very toxic, a trace of it in the treated tissue will not enable the microbes which are there in the tissue, inside the tissue which are of our interest to be isolated will not grow in the medium. So post treatment washes are very much required for mercury chloride. And since we have a heavy metal in this compound, it is designated as environmentally hazardous. And the use of mercury chloride in the laboratory as well as in other application like seed treatment have been discouraged because of its environmental hazardous nature. This mercury chloride compound causes oxidation of peptide linkage and denaturation of protein. And this is how this compound kills microbes. Now, let us see a general procedure for surface sterilization. Say we have some plant tissues. Say we have some pieces of plant tissue from where microbes are expected to be isolated. These pieces of plant tissues are cut from leaf. We can also use pieces of plant tissues cut from stem or root. Now depending on the plant part, the dipping time will vary. Now after getting the pieces of plant tissue, we immerse or dip them in surface sterilizing agent of desired concentration for a specified duration. After that certain duration, wash the pieces of plant tissues in 2-3 to three changes of sterile water. This step is a must for sodium hypochlorite and mercury chloride. This step may be omitted for calcium hypochlorite or 70% ethanol. Now after you get the surface sterilized plant tissues, this can be directly placed on medium surface to get the inner microbes isolated. These surface sterilized plant tissues can be placed directly on the nutrient media to get fungi isolated from them or they can be processed further by crushing and preparing a suspension and streaking the suspension on a suitable nutrient media to get bacteria isolated. So this is how uh, surface sterilization is done. So what we have learned in this lesson, we have learned when we require surface sterilization. We also learned the difference between sterilization and disinfection, then different surface sterilizing agents and their mechanisms of action, and finally a general procedure for surface sterilization. Thank you very much.